Hello and welcome to another video in this series which attempts to answer the most frequently asked questions in Fantasy Grounds Unity. Um, and in this one we are going to uh, wrap up our look at the uh, line of sight feature for uh, Unity and specifically we're going to concentrate on the uh, terrain feature. Uh, so uh, we need a map and we've picked this one here because it has uh, various uh, terrain features that we want to uh, occlude. Um, so as usual we need to uh, uh, go into our line of sight uh, tool uh, uh, make sure we've got terrain selected and then we'll uh, select the line tool. Um, so we'll have a look at the height first as you can see that there is um, this hill here has got uh, various contours and it's going up the hill. Um, so uh, a token sitting or standing at the bottom here uh, wouldn't be able to see all the way up the hill. Now an important point about uh, the terrain occluders is that um, they allow a token to see into the terrain but not out of the terrain. Um, so if we're looking at um, a contour here then we'll show you um, the way we wouldn't do it first of all. Um, we're just going to take this first uh, area, first uh, terrain, and we're going to just uh, cover it uh, with uh, an occluder uh, like that. So it would appear then that we have occluded this uh, terrain uh, from the uh, token. Uh, however if we put a token on the map and then switch on our line of sight um, what you can see is that the token is able to see not only the leading edge of this terrain but all the way right to the back of it. Now if you imagine that this um, particular feature was uh, 30 feet high or something like that then the uh, token should not be able to see all the way right to the back of the terrain. Um, so this would be an incorrect method of dealing with this particular uh, type of terrain feature. Um, so let's switch off our line of sight and go back into our line of sight tool. Uh, we're going to select this and uh, get rid of it. So in order to achieve what we want, what we need to do is uh, start our occluder in the same way as we did before um, just going along the leading edge uh, here uh, but instead of coming all the way back now uh, we just want really to uh, do a kind of narrow uh, double line uh, going all the way up the leading edge of this uh, contour uh, and when we finish now and switch on our line of sight um, we can see that the token can see that this is the bottom of a hill but it can't see beyond it and this is exactly what we want. We don't want the token to be able to see uh, what's on this contour here. We only want them to be able to see that there is a contour um, and until they have moved forward then they won't be able to see uh, beyond it. Now of course in this case they're now seeing everything but we, that's because we haven't filled in occluders for these two contours. Um, and the other thing of course as well is that once the uh, token gets to this point it's no longer able to see uh, down below which technically it should be able to because it's now higher than the below terrain. Um, so at, th at this point uh, the uh, dungeon master can uh, go into the terrain feature and simply turn it off. Um, because the tokens are, are now in a position where they can see uh, below uh, uh, and on the contour that they're actually on. Um, so I've gone ahead um, and drawn in uh, cluders uh, for the uh, other contours here. So now if we uh, select Bal Balasar and get him to move up as he moves up uh, to uh, the first one then his line of sight is blocked by the second and as he progresses it's blocked by the third and so on. And again uh, as they uh, climb up to each level 
the dungeon master can uh, switch off uh, these uh, occluders that, as they pass so that they can correctly see down below as well as above. Uh, so let's go back to uh, our line of so I guess we'll switch off the uh, line of sight first and we'll just get rid of these for the moment. Uh, we don't really need them just now. Um, and we'll now have a look at the trees. Now, um, again, there's some debate here as to how uh, you should ha handle trees as far as the uh, blocking line of sight is concerned. Uh, very few trees have branches which grow all the way down to the ground. So technically, uh, in most cases, the only uh, bit that would actually block the terrain would be the uh, trunk. Uh, so it would be perfectly acceptable to go into the wall tool uh, and a circle and just simply draw a circle uh, where approximately the trunk would be uh, and that would be all you would need to do. Um, another method, of course, is to assume that the trees are actually got branches all the way down to the ground um, and use the terrain tool to um, use to, to represent the line of sight or the blocking of the line of sight. Um, and the easiest uh, way is just to uh, draw a circle. Um, I mean, if you wanted to get more granular, you can go into your select tool, uh, select points and start uh, dragging them out so that they are kind of covering the tree um, a bit more uh, like this. Uh, whatever you want to do really. Um, the main thing is that uh, when we switch on the line of sight we can see that the uh, token sees into the tree but not out of the tree. So the thing that's being occluded is the bit that's actually behind the tree. But it's really up to you how much of the tree um, you want to decide um, occludes the line of sight. I mean, this could be a bush, for example. Um, it not, might not necessarily be a tree. It might just be ordinary vegetation. It'll probably depend on the scenario and the wording of the story, etc., as to um, how much the tree actually occludes the line of sight. Um, if we have a look at the boulders now, just say disable the line of sight. Um, if we have a look at the boulders now, um, we've got a similar situation in the boulders as we had with the uh, contours here. This is a fairly big boulder. Um, so if we were to simply draw a line um, around the boulder uh, like this, then the uh, token, uh, when we put on the line of sight, the token is actually going to see the entirety of the boulder. Um, if this was 10 feet high or something like that, then they wouldn't be able to see the back of the boulder. So we've got a similar situation um, that we had with the contours <clears throat> in that um, we probably want to just put a, a kind of narrow uh, line around the edge of the boulder to uh, make the line of sight uh, more competent. Now, um, and here's another thing which um, th this actually applies to not just um, uh, terrain uh, occluders but also to like cave walls or any uh, rough surface, any rough wall or whatever, is that uh, the further you zoom in the more of these bumps and things that, that you're going to see and the more you're going to be tempted to uh, carefully draw around uh, every one and you're going to end up with a million points. Uh, you don't really need to go to that kind of lengths. We don't need to be pixel perfect. We don't need that kind of precision when you're coming to the line of sight. Because when you look at it from the player's view, um, it's fairly... Um, it, the, 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 the little tiny sort of bumps and things like that don't really matter any. Um, so don't don't zoom in too far and don't make your don't don't make too many points on your thing. So we'll just come round here like this. Uh, as you can see, it's reasonably rough. I mean, we're kind of following the way. And then we'll get to here. Instead of joining, we just uh, double back on ourselves and uh, go round in the clockwise direction until. We are back to here and then join that point 
and then uh, finish there. And what you see now is that the token can only see the base of the rock, uh, they can't see behind the rock. Uh, we could have made uh, a bigger difference between these lines, we could have made this uh, smaller so that this area was was smaller, but whatever whatever you want. It all, all depends to some extent on the, the direction that the tokens are going to be coming in and um, wh whether or not they, they, these even block line of sight. I mean this could be two feet high so you might decide that it doesn't block line of sight at all. Um, but again this is how we would uh, make sure that um, there are some occluders on uh, these rocks. Um, so the terrain occluders are never really going to uh, suit every uh, possible scenario. Uh, I mean if for example um, the token here was sitting on top of this rock um, then he should obviously be able to see uh, outside uh, the rock uh, but he can't because the occluder is preventing him uh, from doing so because of the way we've drawn it. Um, so it, it's not um, it's not going to be uh, it's not going to work for every kind of scenario and I mean you could also suggest that um, if the uh, token is on top of this rock then you should be able to see the top of that rock as well and if we did a similar thing and drew an occluder around this one uh, they wouldn't be able to. So the Dungeon Master again um, can simply switch this occluder off if the uh, character is standing on the top of it um, and uh, that uh, works and if they come back off it then you can switch it back on again etc. Um, so it's the, the terrain occluders are never going to work for every situation um, but if you play around with them and just remember that the uh, players uh, or the token can see into but not out of uh, the terrain occluders. Um, right, I think that probably about wraps it up. I can't really think of uh, much else to uh, say. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.